Learning a language is hard, but it is one of the most incredible tools that we have to connect with people. So I left Canada and moved to Mexico to see what connections I could make and experiences I would unlock by simply just putting myself out there and trying to learn Spanish. And could I do it in only 30 days? Oh my god. Well, I can tell you one thing. There's a lot I wish I knew before starting this. So I'm gonna share with you what I learned through this experience and hopefully you can avoid a lot of the struggles that I had as a first time language learner. Because oh boy, was I in over my head. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Sir? Did you say something? Uh, did you say something? Ah, hasta luego. Hasta luego. I'd say I was off to a pretty good start. So I decided to go and explore a bit of the city. And it was at this point when I realized the reality of what it's actually like moving to a foreign country and not knowing the language. All the normal things that I was used to doing in my country were all of a sudden extremely difficult. Like finding a bathroom, for example. Uh, yeah, never ended up finding that washroom, which was unfortunate because I really had to take a shower. Or paying for things. I still hadn't learned numbers yet, so at this point, I could have been paying $100 for three apples and I would have no idea. And then, even with Google Translate to help me, I still wasn't even able to order a simple tea. Un uh, tea verde um, y agua helada. Tres caliente o frío? Um, uh... Day one was off to a rough start and I was gonna need some help if I was gonna make this work. So I found myself two Spanish teachers, Chris and Kike, and they said they could help me out. The only Spanish I've done, two levels of Duolingo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Normally we will start with some grammar, verbos auxiliares. I don't even know what that is in English. <laughs> I spent the next few days continuing my classes with Kike and Chris and practicing at home, but I very quickly ran into my first obstacle. The thing I have to be careful about with, with translating this, with like Google Translate, is it doesn't get it fully accurate. So by using Google Translate, I might actually be learning it the wrong way. E lo que, and what, but then I want to know the individual is like e lo que, and it, and that. You put that together, and it becomes and what? That doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. At this point, the translations were really frustrating me. So I decided to ask my teacher what his thoughts were. Our languages are different. With different words with different uses. For example, como se llama tu novia? The translation is not what is the name of your girlfriend. The translation is something like, how is your girlfriend calling? This literally explains my frustration and my confusion. And I'm like, don't, don't this doesn't what? make sense. I'm doing, uh, it's like I'm doing it wrong. You have to learn Spanish. You don't have to learn how to translate the Spanish to English. Oh man, it's so hard to do it is. that. Because I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I'm like, am I just like really stupid and I can't figure this out? This is one of the most important things that I really wish I knew before jumping into it. The problem of getting lost in translation. The way I like to think about it now is that there is really only one universal language. And it's a language that doesn't have any words. This is emotions, actions, feelings, events, concepts, things that just are. And the languages that we know today are more like translations of that one universal language, using the tool of words. Like the example Chris gave. Como se llama tu novia is the exact same thing as what is your girlfriend's name? Because both languages are expressing the universal language or the concept of simply just wanting to know what your girlfriend's name is. And where it gets lost is when you directly try to translate each word to mean the same thing in each language. And if you can understand that concept, you can save a ton of time by not getting lost in translation. On day six, my Airbnb hosts, Kike and Ade, invited me over for dinner, which was really nice because I pretty much spent the last week only talking to my Spanish teachers or I was alone. So I was really looking forward to spending some time with people. Thank you guys for inviting me. This is amazing. <laughs> this is the, the real uh, Mexicano experience. <laughs> Thankfully, Kike, Ade, and Guadalupe spoke English. So I was actually able to connect with everyone a little bit. Oh, you braid? Uh-huh. I'm gonna braid my hair. See? I'm gonna get my hair braided. <laughs> Not really, guys. <laughs> this is what it's all about. Let's and in you. like 20 days, I'll be able to have a, a conversation in Spanish with you guys. You should practice. I, it's hard right now because I don't know what you guys are saying. Even if you don't understand nothing, it's good that you listen. In one moment, you will start speaking Spanish. Uh, yeah. You should try. I think I gotta get just comfortable with just trying. Spending time with the family was great, yet it ended up leaving me really frustrated. 
I was a week into the 30 days and I still knew nothing, while other people are making insane progress in just one week. Obviamente, estamos aquí para perder cuánto he podido aprender en una semana. Ya, 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 necesitan la lavandería. Ya, 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 necesitan la lavandería. Ya, 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 necesitan la Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> But I was determined to be able to speak with them in Spanish. So I started looking for any way that I could learn faster. There are a little over 170,000 words in the English language. However, only one to 3,000 words make up the majority of daily use. So I'm going to start by learning top 1,000 words. Maybe this was it. The whole time I was just learning words that weren't useful for speaking. So I started making my lists. I started filling up all of my free time with learning. If I wasn't in class, I was using language apps. Yo hablo español. Or listening to Spanish podcasts. So now we can say he is normal. Es normal. And at night, I would watch Spanish movies. But I was having a lot of trouble understanding the movies. So I decided to try a different method I saw, which was learning vocabulary by repeatedly watching TED Talks. That sounded like literally one word to me. I feel like I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself and I need to go backwards. This is one of the most common problems people learning a language for the first time face, the uncertainty of approach. And I ran headfirst into it. I wanted to learn so bad that I was trying every method of learning that I could find. But I would try one method and then jump to another without even putting enough work into the first one for it to even have an impact. I was basically trying to start from the beginning and knock over the biggest domino, instead of having patience and putting work into each step. And all of this time that I was spending trying these different methods, I wasn't even doing any of the homework for my classes, and it was starting to show. Que dia es hoy? Que dia? Do you know the, the days of the week? No. No? Cuando quieres mandar la carta Cuando es tu novia? Where? When? When? Um, uh, and unfortunately for me, I didn't understand this at the time, and it really started to eat away at me. Yeah, barrer. Mirar. Abarré. 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 Limpiar. Limpiar. Uh -huh. I'm like halfway through this challenge and I still cannot figure out what they're trying to say to me. I'm like really starting to think that I'm not going to be able to do this in 30 days. And then I look at all these other people who are on YouTube and they're like, I learned a language in seven days. How the f did you learn a language in seven days? And the more work I put in, the more my frustration grew. That's the thing that's just so frustrating, is that it, oh, ah, now it changes, it means this, but now it means this. It's like, what do you mean? How can I, how? I don't understand how. Oh my god. This is f***ing hard. Uh, uh, dos gringas. Dos gringas con todo, cilantro, cebolla y piña. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cilantro, cebolla y piña, o le traigo aparte ya. Ah, yeah, the, the, um, the four. Okay. Uh, yeah. Day 16 and I still can't order a damn taco. That was probably one of the most uncomfortable social interactions I've ever had. And it was enough that it brought me to my breaking point. How you doing? Bien, ¿y tú? If I'm being honest, I'm really struggling. Yeah, I feel like I'm not really getting anywhere. I'm getting really frustrated. There is only one way. Ooh. Sorry, give me a sec. Ah, don't worry. You're doing it. You are doing it well. I think you miss home. It's just like everything is so like overwhelming. It's really, really isolating and lonely. I don't know how to like connect with people and then it's super frustrating because I'm not getting anywhere and then I'm like not able to, to communicate. And then I get more frustrated and it makes me go all over the place even more just trying to grasp onto something that will like allow me to learn. Mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm failing. You're afraid to make mistakes because you are so perfect on your things. I think you are here not only for learning Spanish, you are here to learn how to live without being worried about everything. You are pushing, 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 pushing. Why not stop pushing you and start enjoying it? I don't know how. How do you enjoy a city? Walk in the streets, take some pictures, learn how to say hola, my name is Brad. I don't know Spanish, but I want to meet you. It was here that I realized my biggest mistake, the comparison trap. I put so much pressure on myself because I saw how fast other people were apparently learning, and I set an expectation for me to do the same. But the thing is, learning a language is not a race, and it's really important not to get discouraged by the speed that you are learning in comparison to others, especially when those people already speak a similar language or have already learned one before and understand the struggles. And all the pressure I put onto myself all it did was make me miserable. 
So what if I let go of the expectations of getting it right and just tried having fun with it instead? All right, I'm not letting this thing beat me. So I've got a, my little notebook with some phrases and stuff. I'm gonna just go out and try to have basic conversation with, with strangers. Oh, damn it. Okay, come on, Brad. Hola, buenas tardes. I just gotta pick somebody. Okay, this one right here. Hola, buenas tardes. Even that just sends like a shiver up my spine of just nerves. Hola, hola. Hola, 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 buenas tardes. After the first few greetings, I was feeling a lot less nervous. So I decided to actually go and talk to someone. Hola, hola. ¿Cómo está? Really? Eh, ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Brad. Estoy en ten, en ten tanto uh -huh. aprender español. Ah, estás intentando hablar español. No, no te quieres limpiar los tenis. Sí. Sí, sí, se limpia. Platicamos. Sure. Eres de aquí? De Oaxaca, yes. Sí. Tu fa familia? Mi uh, familia. Uh, uh, do you have kids? Él es mi hijo. Tres hijos. Hijos. Tres. Dos hombres. Dos hombres. Y una mujer. Uh, una, una hombre. Uh, una hermano. <laughs> <laughs> Muy poquito. <laughs> no, pero está bien, está bien. Okay, that was awesome. That is like the exact reason why I came down here, which is having interactions like that and trying to connect with people. The confidence was starting to build and I was feeling great. So I met up with Kike and we decided to keep the momentum going. Well, let's go talk to strangers. Yo intentando aprender español. Puedo hablar con usted? Sí, claro. Hey! ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo Manuel. Me llamo Brad. ¿Eres de aquí? Ajá. Ah, sí. Soy de Canadá. Oh, Canadá. lejos de casa. It's far, far. Sí. ¿Tienes un mascota? Sí. Uh, ¿Qué haces en tu trabajo? Preparar bebidas. Bartender. Yeah. Ah, sí. Oh, how was, how was no, that was cool. <laughs> Let's go. There's a uh, group of people over there playing soccer. I really want to go and pass them to play. I decided to do my morning routine first and go talk to them after the nerves settled. But I got nervous and now it's too late because they're not playing anymore. <sighs> Next time I see them playing, I'm going to go and I'm gonna ask them to play. I'm gonna at least just try to talk to them. The next day came and they were surprisingly playing again, but I still couldn't build up the courage to go over. It was as if all of the progress and confidence I had built over the past few days just disappeared. Talking to one or two strangers is one thing, but this is a huge group of random Spanish speakers and I was going to be totally alone. I really just did not expect it to be this hard but my fear has just completely crippled me. And I get these odd bursts of courage sometimes, like you've seen in the videos, but honestly, most of my life, I've lived with this exact fear holding me back. But I, like, I don't want to live like this anymore. I, I didn't come down to Mexico to just repeat these habits. It's like the only answer is to just do it. <laughs> As I turned the corner, I saw the crowd of people and my heart started racing. But it was too late to turn back now. Papa, juegues football? Ya, ya jugamos. Quiero ver the football. Ah, no, ya, ya jugamos. Ya, ya jugamos. Ya, 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 acabó, ya. El este y el gordito que va para allá. Yeah, I had no idea what he was saying, and it seemed like they had finished playing and I had missed my chance. But just as I was getting ready to leave, something unexpected happened. ¿Sí? Oh. Esta es la fiesta después del juego. Sí, sí, sí. Celebración. Ahorita empieza con la danza. Este, este. ¿Cuál es su penacho? Ay, echa el hombre. Baila. To say I was in over my head would be an understatement. I couldn't understand a goddamn thing anybody was saying. But that didn't seem to matter to them. Well, I sat down to join them for lunch, and I don't think I've ever been welcomed into a community so quickly in my entire life. Hey, brother! Hola! Hey, you! 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 Hey, you
I don't know if it was the copious amounts of cervezas I had or what, but somehow I managed to spend the next seven hours with 40 random Mexicans who didn't speak any English. And it turned out to be one of the best days I've had the entire time I've been down here. I don't know what it was, but something in me changed after this day. If I can spend an entire day with these guys, then what else could I do if I just tried? So for the last seven days, I challenged myself to connect with as many people as possible, even if I couldn't fully communicate. And things just started happening. I talked with the owner of the coffee shop I do my lessons at, and he invited me to join him for Tai Chi. I started spending more time with my Airbnb hosts, and they invited me to a graduation. And after the graduation, I joined them all for dinner. They even brought us to have a traditional Oaxacan meal at their friend's home. It was incredible. And then I got invited to a church service of the guys from soccer. And one of the couples from there invited us to have lunch with them the next day. All of a sudden, I went from isolation in my room to asking the lady from the local pizza shop to have dinner with her. Queremos cenar contigo. Sí. Cuando sea. Jueves, aquí, sí. ocho. Ocho. And to bring it all home, I brought everyone I met together on the final day. I may not have learned a ton of Spanish in the 30 days I was here, but I was reminded once again how many incredible people there are in the world that want to connect. The only thing that prevents us from that is letting fear get in the way. And by simply just putting yourself out there, a whole new world of experiences open up to you. Hey, I'm forever grateful for you. Yeah. We are family now. Bye bye, bro. <laughs> See you soon. That was a great experience. That's exactly what I wanted to come to Mexico for, was like that right yeah. there. Learning a new language has genuinely opened up the world and connection to me in a way that I couldn't have ever imagined. And it's something that I would recommend everyone to do in their life. Now you might not be able to move to a new country for 30 days like I did, but there are other options to learn like Lingoda, which is an online learning platform where you can take French, German, English, or Spanish classes. And the reason I like Lingoda is that you get to learn and practice with native speaking teachers from all around the world. As I think the best way to learn a language is to actually speak it. And learning directly with a teacher allows you to ask questions in case you're confused on anything Thing, instead of having to Google the answer, which for me usually just made me even more confused. They have classes available 24 seven so you can work it into any time that fits your schedule. And their courses are suited to everyone's language level and needs. So if you're a beginner and you're wanting some guidance, you can follow the classes in the order that they're presented. Or if you're experienced, you can build your own curriculum. And if you sign up for one of their sprint challenges and fully complete every class, you can get 100% of your money back. So join with the link in the description for $25 off and maybe I will see you in one of the group classes.